Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Art of Outreach Marketing with Satisfax and Apartment Ratings. We are so excited about this topic today. Um, everyone always wants to know, like, how can we do outreach marketing better, right? How can we use this tool in our marketing toolkit to really be beneficial for our community? So we are super excited to get moving and talk through all kinds of fun stuff related to outreach. So I wanted to familiarize you guys as we allow people to kind of join us today. I know we have quite a bit of registered participants, so we're excited to welcome all of you. If this is your first webinar, welcome. Um, but as just so you guys know, when we get started, make sure you do or have access to your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, that is where you'll have all kinds of opportunities to ask questions throughout the day. So this is interactive, even though you're on mute, we would love to hear from you and really address any questions that you have so that you feel really good about this topic when you leave today. All right, like I mentioned, as we are waiting for people to join, um, my name is Melissa DeSico and I'm your host today for this Power Panels episode. So I'm the Director of Client Performance for Satisfax and Apartment Ratings. And you can find us online um, on Facebook and also on Instagram, on LinkedIn, all of those things. Um, we'd love to connect with you or myself personally as well. I love to share all kinds of fun things related to our industry and also Satisfax and Apartment Ratings. And I'm super happy to welcome you guys today. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how today is going to go. So it's going to be about 60 minutes. Um, following today's webinar, you will get the recording of the session today and also the slides that we have um, up on the screen. So you don't have to have all of that, but um, do feel free to take notes as we go. Um, but you will get all of the other details as well. As I mentioned, please use that questions box. Um, we want your questions and we will make sure to try to address them as you submit them. Um, but if not, we'll make sure to get to those questions at the end of the webinar. So we will make sure to answer anything that you have. Um, following the webinar, obviously we love feedback here at Satisfax. That's what we are made of, um, mostly resident feedback, but we wanna hear from you too. So please, at the end, we'd love for you to rate um, this session and also comment um, you know, what your takeaways were, what you liked, didn't like, those kinds of things, because we always wanna make these better for you. So let us know how we did um, and rate us at that exit survey. So do make sure to, to take advantage of that if you don't mind. And then if you're new to us, like I said, welcome to your first Power Panels webinar, but we host these every third Thursday of the month at this time. Um, so we have all kinds of different topics um, that we typically cover. And so we're always looking for new topics and we're always looking for panelists to join us um, as experts. So if you have in that exit um, survey, we also have a section where if you are interested in being a panelist, um, we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any kind of interest in any of the topics, I think I have a list of them in there. So you can choose from those, or if you have one that's not on there that you'd like to talk about, or you'd like to hear about um, either of those things, um, we'd love to hear about that too. Um, in addition, I know you saw in the email that we will be giving out a $50, um, excuse me, Starbucks gift card today. And so we will talk a little bit about that and how to really earn that or win that at the end. But we want you to kind of pay attention today and think through your best outreach ideas that you get from our panelists today. So it can be something that you do already that's outreach or something that they said today that you want to implement or maybe kind of tweak a little bit. So kind of think through how this applies to your community and your marketing strategy overall. And we'll talk about how to do that on social at the end. All right, if again, if this is one of your first uh, power panels, we have tons of power panel content out there. So you can access any of this in the education section at satisfax.com. So all kinds of different topics um, that might interest you, you can access all of that for free. So all kinds of different stuff out there um, to take advantage of. All right, let's hop in to all things outreach marketing, right? So. Um, as I mentioned, so it's so funny when I started in multifamily, you know, outreach was kind of like um, cold flyering, right? <laughs> I don't know the best way to describe it, but really it was pretty much like taking your marketing message, right? And I, I visualize it like putting it in a paint gun, right? And then just 
sort of spraying it around and hoping that it finds a hard surface to stick on, right? I feel like that's kind of what outreach marketing was way back when many of us started in this industry. And so, you know, it was, it was putting flyers on cars, it was dropping them off randomly at businesses, things like that. That's what outreach was. Um, and it was very surface level, right? It was just go there, do this thing and kind of check off the box, right? Um, but I think that now outreach is about giving, going back to the premise um, of old outreach, but now adding sort of a heavy focus on the human to human connection. So that philosophy of human to human connection instead of marketing at people. So it's really kind of a different way of thinking about marketing by building those connections. And the good news is you guys, we are pros at that, right? In this industry, we are really good at building those human to human connections. So this is just about how do we apply that skill to this type of marketing to make it work for us. And so, you know, this is how, you know, how are we going to gain fans? How are we going to get visibility? How do we gain credibility and build that trust and make that marketing and our message really sticky through outreach? So um, I, like I mentioned a minute ago, I have some incredible panelists today that have been doing amazing things as it relates to outreach. Um, and they're really going above and beyond and taking outreach to the next level. So I'm excited to introduce you to those folks in just a moment. But the real sort of goals for outreach now, you know, it's not that old outreach marketing. It's really about building relationships. So just like we kind of build a rapport, build a relationship with prospects and then residents when they become residents, it's about doing those same things in other areas. So whether it be, you know, in the neighborhood with pumps or, you know, people like that or, or different businesses, things like that. But it also is then promoting your business, but in a really authentic way, not the same as it used to be where you just drop off flyers and hope they put them in their waiting room. Right? So it's really about building a connection instead of just putting yourself in front of people that may or may not be interested in your message. And then the last thing that is the most important as it relates to what we do here at Satisfax, you know, all of us, especially if you're a client of ours, you know how important that sense of community is. And we talk about that all the time. And that's the thing that really drives those renewal rates. Um, and it really gets your residents connected to your teams. And so that sense of community is what we're looking for. And that's what outreach often builds, especially in the way that my panelists are gonna talk about it today. You'll kind of see how that's connected. And we actually just did an online renter survey for 2021. So you can access this on um, any of our social channels. We've posted about it recently and also on satisfax.com. But that importance of sense of community has grown almost 20% since 2019. So when you're thinking through like what's important, what's gonna build this kind of thing, that this is becoming more and more important. It's really about that trust. Are you building that brand that is trustworthy? So does it seem authentic and not a marketing message that's being thrown at people? So we find that really interesting. And that's, again, what they're really looking for. And outreach is one of the only marketing ways that is going to gain some ground here for sense of community, because all of the other marketing is really directed you know at people it's something where hopefully we catch them when they're looking but it's it's a marketing message right it's not as authentic as coming from an individual or human to human um, so that's why this is so important and what my panelists are going to talk about and just again i know you all have probably seen this if you're satisfax clients but you know sense of community since we've been tracking this in 20 starting in 2013 that sense of community so again building connections with your residents um, making sure that you know, you know their names, you know their pets' names, you know their interests, things like that. Um, that has been the most important driver of value to your community since we started tracking it. And that means that when you have a high sense of community, that's when people are willing to pay more money to live at your community. So when you have those renewal conversations, are those easy when you have a rent increase because they feel like it's worth it to pay that rent increase at your community? And that's what we all run, right? We hate those conversations uh, regarding rent increases. So we want to make that as easy as possible. And this is one of the ways to do that, especially through marketing. So I'm going to introduce my panels. I did have one question that came through. And yes, for those of you who are on the webinar, you will get the recording today. And you'll also get the slides that we talk about. But you can also always access this content again at satisfax.com. So do feel free. You can always get it there too. So if you're wondering, you will get the content. Okay. 
my incredible panelists. I'm so excited for them to introduce themselves today. As I mentioned, these are experts in their field and they're doing really fun things that not only are they fun for all of us, right? We are social people in this industry and we love building connections. And this marketing source allows us to do that. And so these folks are amazing at it and they're applying that skill to marketing as well. And so I'd love for them to introduce themselves. Um, so I'll start with Melania, if you can introduce yourself a little bit about you. Hello everyone, my name is Melania Armenta and I'm an experienced marketing manager at Rainwater Real Estate. I've been in the industry since 2009 and kind of have really seen the evolution kind of um, what Melissa was covering as far as like the sense of community just really growing as far as like one of the driving factors and whether or not people choose to live in our communities. And so I'm really excited to kind of share um, our perspective at Rangewater as far as what makes magic happen when it comes to outreach marketing. So thank you. Yay, we're so excited to have you. All right, and Tiffany, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. First and foremost, thank you so much, Melissa, and the entire Satisfax team for allowing us to be panelists today. We're super excited to share a lot of helpful information. My name is Tiffany again. I'm a senior community manager for JVM Realty. I manage a luxury community named the Mark at Fishers District, located in Fishers, Indiana, and I've been in the industry since 2010. I love it. Yay. <laughs> Welcome, and thank you to you, more importantly. <laughs> All right, and Jessica. Hey everyone, I'm Jess. So I work for Grub Properties. I am currently a pre-leasing specialist, but everything I'm going off of today is from just being a leasing consultant recently at Link Apartments Innovation Quarter. And I've been in the industry since 2019. Um, so not too far away, but I've had a lot of great mentors. So I'm excited to share with y'all. So thank you. Yay, and where is um, that community located, Jessica? Link Apartments Innovation Quarter is in downtown Winston-Salem. Oh, perfect. Okay. In North Carolina. Sorry, I get used to just saying Winston-Salem. <laughs> no, that's great. I was just thinking, you know, we're kind of all from everywhere. So I like to I like to see that. So that's always fun to get it spread out a bit. All right. Well, I am going to be quiet now because these panelists have so much to share with you guys today. So I'm super excited. And we're gonna dig right in. We're gonna jump right into what I think is the best thing. And that's what they think are the most, the top three sort of creative things that they do um, to really enhance that sense of community with outreach marketing. So they're gonna share some of their best tips. And we're gonna start with Jessica today. So Jessica, take it away. Perfect. So one of our biggest things that we have started off in the past year that has really shown us a lot of growth and outreach marketing success would be through our social media giveaways and Win It Wednesday. So you can see on um, this first picture is a Win It Wednesday. And what we do is we have our followers and even people that may not follow us, um, they tag both the us and the business that we are promoting or the giveaway we're doing a gift card with. And then we also have them tag a friend. So this is really great because it provides exposure for the business and it helps our residents see who's in the community and who doesn't get excited about a giveaway. Um, so we do see a lot of um, comments and shares. So we've had a lot of entries. So sometimes we've even had over a hundred entries and getting 40 followers from these. And one of the biggest things is we like to share this post to our story. So then um, everyone is able to see that, but we also tag the local partner we're working with that week. So they can share on their story and then we get followers from them as well. So it is a win-win in both we're gaining traction with our residents and people that may not follow us, as well as supporting local and the businesses around us. And then I would say the next thing would be resident events. So we do love resident events here. Um, so we do kind of have some fun ones that we've kind of done. So we um, had a term that we came up in our company with um, by regional called away games. So we basically have residents hosted at different businesses close to us. We typically like to do it um, in places that are walking distance. So it really gives them a sense of community. They get to walk and meet local places as well as neighbors. And all we kind of do is have to show up. So we've done a paint and sip at a local brewery. So we just come and the booze is already there. We have the painting instructor, instructor meet us there and then have all the supplies. And then we've even done like Halloween parties where we'll have booze there. We just open a tab. 
Um, we obviously have to cap it, um, but we had like the tab open and we have fun events that happen there. And then a really fun one we did as well is a pizza making class. So this allows us to work with our residents and a local partner um, all in one, which is super great. And then a lot of our promotion um, involves social media as well. So when we're promoting these events, we're able to tag the local partners and they're able to share the events we've done with them. Um, we've had the pizza place share pictures from our event and kind of promote that to everyone in the community, showing them that they do private events. So it's a really great way to kind of partner with them and work with them because we also do pop-ups as well. So we would invite local partners that we've been to or maybe not been to and artisans to even come into our leasing office or we've had a big pop-up each year um, for a holiday pop-up where we have vendors come up there and sell to residents and community members. And this is a really great event because it also allows us to outreach to everyone in the community, but also those local businesses and partnerships that we're looking for. Because then we have people looking and connecting with us because they found us through someone else. And it really helps boost um, social media outreach as well, because we're able to comment on these um, kind of posts that people are putting out there, allowing us to invite them and sell their goods in our office and gain exposure because we have well over 400 residents. So we're trying to utilize our space to hold those events that are allowing those to gain more exposure um, and traction from our residents. And then I would say the next biggest thing we do is we share local events, updates, menus, and specials that local businesses have to our story. So we take their post and we share it and we make sure to tag them so they also see that we share their post. And this allows our residents to see that we're actively engaged in the community and care about the events that are going on. So we kind of look at it as if we were a resident here, what would we want to do? What can we walk to this weekend that's happening? How can we support our local businesses and our local partners by sharing what's going on? Because a lot of our residents don't know what's going on or they just moved here so they don't know who they want to connect with or where they want to shop. Um, so we like to do that. A really good example, it was kind of ironic last night, we shared one of our residents opened a business in downtown and we shared their business and they had made a video and we we're just like, hey, check them out. Um, they do a lot of cool environmental and local things. So we had a resident that is current DM us and thank us for um, showing them new places in the area. So it shows that people are really engaging with that content and they're excited to see the events that are going on. But then on the other side, we also had the business owner reach out and DM us and thank us for supporting and sharing their goods. So it really showed that it's a great balance between helping your residents and helping your local partners. So those are the biggest things that we have done that have really kind of engaged the community and our residents. Yeah, I love, love, love that sort of new age sort of approach to outreach. And I think, you know, one thing someone asked on the questions, and it's a really good question, I think this is tough because I think, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you originally, when, when social media started kind of creeping in, when all the apartment communities started to have social media, right, it, it, and people started using it as like a lead generation tool, which is fine, but a lot of your prospects aren't, isn't really the audience, right, on your social channels, the residents, that lifestyle is really the target on social media. So it's really engaging them. But someone had asked, what do you do if you don't have a lot of a following on social media? Do you have like some examples or what did you guys do um, to really build that initially? Can you answer that, Jessica? Yeah, absolutely. So at first, I think it really starts with the connection. So what we like to do is when people come to the office, we like to engage with them, whether they're moving in. It's like, hey, do you follow us on social media? If you don't, you should, because we do win it Wednesday every week and you're able to win a local prize. And a lot of our residents love that. I think it does take a couple of times to try to figure out like what your residents want to win and see happening. But I think that this has also helped our following so much just by starting giveaways because we have people that comment week by week and they don't, they're not even a resident here. We've had people come pick up gifts and they're like, oh, my friend lives in the building and they tag me every week. So I'm going to tag more people. So I think it really starts small. But once you kind of gain that traction and have things that everyone wants and then you're connecting with the business, Sometimes I even DM the business and I'm like, hey, if you want to share it, feel free. A resident doesn't just have to win this. And then you're able to gain more followers and traction with those events. Um, so I think it's really nice that you're able to just start off small 
And then you kind of get more people week by week that are excited and they're like, oh, what's when it Wednesday? Like I've been out taking a picture of like a gift card and someone's like, oh, I think I see a win it Wednesday coming soon. So we really kind of build that hype up around it with our residents and personal interactions as well. That's so, that's so wonderful. And I, I think, you know, you can customize this to your community too. It doesn't have to be exactly what Jessica's doing. It can be something, you know, that, you know, relates to your community, but something similar. And I think I love, you know, the best part about it is you're really focusing on the engagement of your residents, but sort of the, the sort of back end of that, that is the kind of the unintentional consequence is that you're getting all of these people that are sort of watching from the wings, right? And now you're having these people that are fans of yours that don't even live there, right? So it's kind of a cool <laughs> way to gain those fans. And I think, you know, what you're kind of describing is the new age of influencer marketing because it's not about celebrities, right? It doesn't have to be celebrities. It's like your residents are the celebrities. They're the ones we want to celebrate anyway. And so we make them those influencers and they'll start doing it willingly for you and start being your brand advocate. And they're like spreading that truth, right? You're how wonderful it is to live at your community to everyone they know because they they want to right so i think that's really cool that you really do that um and allow those non-residents to win i think someone else just commented that they like the idea of letting people that aren't residents win because that brings them into your office right so it's just another way to convert them <laughs> to the dark side yeah, right? absolutely <laughs> all right well those were wonderful thank you and please keep those com the questions coming in uh, we'll address those all right, so Tiffany, let's share what you have going on and all the wonderful ideas. Awesome, yeah. So um, I do wanna piggyback on Jessica's comments. Social media is huge. It is by far one of the most important parts of outreach um, nowadays. So I totally agree with everything she's mentioned on that as well as resident events. I do have a couple of additional um, pointers on those items because those are a couple of the ideas I had listed. Um, so as she mentioned for social media, it's just extremely important to tag the vendors you partner with for resident mm -hmm. events, tag them, repost stories that tag them so that they can reshare and expose our property. Just as she said, it's exposure for them to participate in our resident events, but it's also exposure for us whenever they repost our stories. So I'm super big on partnering with my um, local vendors. Um, I recently did an event for um, a massage and mimosas on site. So how that worked is I partnered with one of my um, one of my local vendors that um, a massage company and they came on site. They offered free courtesy massage to my residents and that was followed by um, catered omelets and mimosas. Um, while they were on site, they were actually taking pictures of my event. They were posting it to their social media, tagging us. And then we would reshare that. And then we did the same. We would post our pictures, we would tag them, and then they would reshare. Um, so, vice versa. Um, taking pictures is just a, a pro tip take as many pictures and, and try to get as many good pictures as you can um, for your events because it's a huge part of obviously being able to um, demonstrate and show to the audience whether they live there or whether they don't live at your property what exactly you offer. Um, so, Definitely a big follower of the social engagement, as Jessica mentioned. Um, as for social media, I do have a couple of additional um, things that I like to do. In the past, I've done video testimonials. Um, what I usually do with that is um, I obviously ask for um, residents to share their experience, whether it's their move-in experience, whether it's mid-lease experience, um, and we record that via a video and then post that to um, YouTube. That's the big one that I usually use for the video testimonials. Um, we have had a lot of success using um, YouTube testimonials in the past. And then now that Instagram is obviously bigger, um, that's another place that you can post um, testimonials, whether you, you, you use your Instagram story and then create um, highlights. Um, if you're familiar with Instagram, there's a highlight option in order to um, store these stories that you're posting, um, which you can title um, resident testimonials, just as an example. Um, and then another thing that we like to do um, when using social media is we like to uh, perform vacant video tours. So um, 
We like to use a gimbal um, or different video apps, editing apps, and I allow my leasing team to get creative with this. We use TikTok sometimes, which has been a huge hit for us, especially in our markets. Um, but using TikTok or creating a video, um, recording vacants that maybe are just the target units you have on your um, list or just units that you want to um, show online. Um, we, we create the recordings and we post those on social. And then the way to outreach and gain exposure um, using Instagram or Facebook is uh, hashtags, hashtags specific to your property and or the local area. Um, that way you gain exposure that way. Obviously you can use paid ads, but if you wanna do free organic exposure, um, using appropriate hashtags is super effective as well. Um, and then the other ideas that I personally have is um, we do what we call a loyalty program where we partner with um, local vendors to offer exclusive discounts to their um, locations for our residents. Um, we do make sure that um, the vendors that we partner with for the loyalty program offer um, discounts that are exclusive to our residents so the public would not be receiving these offers. Um, we make sure there's obviously an, an agreement signed for that. Um, and I like to offer this pro tip, um, instead of attempting contact to vendors via phone or email, it's super, super important to build the rapport with them by actually showing up to their location. So, you know, appearing in person, introducing yourself, making sure that you explain the benefit, um, the joint benefit and partnering with them so that they can offer exclusive discounts to the residents. Um, and I like to also leave branded collateral um, at some of my local businesses, especially the restaurants and bars. Um, I like to create custom coasters um, that have our QR codes for our property. So a QR code that links to our Facebook, Instagram, and website on a coaster. Um, they never say no to coasters and it's free exposure for those who are sitting down and having a drink um, and can see that coaster with our information on it. Um, so that's kind of um, one of my ideas regarding the loyalty program and some of the things I do related to that. Um, right now, I'm currently partnered with several businesses in my area, just for an example, that offer exclusive um, discounts to our residents. And it's a huge hit because it builds so much value, um, you know, when you're when you're talking to prospects and they realize they're going to be saving so much money um, visiting the businesses that they're already going to be visiting while living at the community and visiting the area. Um, so it's just been a huge hit for us um, having that loyalty program. And then lastly, um, one of the most important for me is um, having a preferred employer program. Um, we have a preferred employer program in which um, obviously we have a list of those who are considered our preferred employers. And then I like to do periodic check-ins with them, provide gift baskets that have some of our information in it, the preferred employer information as well as some, as well as some branded items. Um, and then with HR permission, I like to leave those in the break rooms of the preferred employers and then just do check ins with um, HR. Um, we I have in the past had people referred from the HR department because we've built that rapport with them. So we continue to get some of those repeat um, employers referring their own associates to us. Uh, so that's that's pretty much sums up my ideas. I love it. And we, we have so many questions coming in. This is amazing. So I guess this can be, you know, um, and maybe, I don't know if Jessica or Tiffany wants to answer this, but we're asking, so what do you do about the gifts? Do you typically purchase those or have some kind of budget for those? Or do you have um, vendors donate or kind of what's that process there in terms of, the, the, I guess the win at Wednesday was specifically kind of what they were asking about. Like, how do you get those gifts for that campaign? Yeah. I can kind of go along with for our win at Wednesday. So a lot of times we do buy those. So we typically do $25. It doesn't have to be $25. Um, anyone's going to get excited, whether it's like five, $10 gift card. Um, but we have found that sometimes our vendors like to throw things in and our business partners. So when we go and ask for a gift card, we kind of make that connection and that conversation there. And sometimes they'll throw in a free mug or stickers or things like that, that kind of make it worthwhile. I will say that when we have something doing really like well for Win It Wednesday, sometimes it'll hype everyone up more when we go get a second one. Like we'll post on our story, we're like, we're going to get a second one because there's so many comments. 
and people will literally flood our DMs like, woohoo, like we're so excited. Like, when are you going to pull? Um, so a lot of times we do buy those and we have seen kind of results from just putting in the money for that. But it's also um, good to note that we do have a lot of great vendors that we could talk to and partner with. And we have like a lot of great, even business people that will be like, hey, we see that you're doing Win It Wednesday. Can I be a part of your Win It Wednesday? And they'll donate gift cards for us. So it's kind of a good balance. But I think at first, it's always starting off and just putting that money forward towards it because you do see a lot of results with it. That's a good point. And I think another thing you can think through too, you don't have to start right out the gate like a race car, right? You can do it maybe once a month and that's more feasible in terms of budgets if you have like a smaller budget property. You know, so think about that or as Jessica mentioned, making those partnerships. There's a lot of vendors out there or even the business that would be willing to help out or if you maybe go have these with them, right? <laughs> um, so that's a good way to do it and maybe spread those budget dollars out a little bit. Um, so really good points. Um, and then someone had asked um, about events. So obviously, Jessica, you have a big venue because you have a very large community. And um, Tiffany, I'm not sure if you do, but if they have, they don't have quite the space to hold people, things like this, where do you guys typically suggest that they do these types of events? Yeah, so I, um, I've i also done off-site events at, um, as Jessica mentioned earlier, where um, depending especially on the event and knowing it may take up more space than we may have, um, we have hosted events at um, our local vendors um, or partnered, you know, restaurants. Example, I actually just did one recently where I hosted an offsite event at um, Hot Room Yoga. So instead of having them come here and teach a class, I had asked them if they would be willing to host the offsite yoga class at their location. And um, nine times out of 10, guys, that when you ask, they will help. Vendors will help. They are eager to help you. They're eager to, they know um, that they're going to gain that exposure as well by you know offering you a free gift or sponsoring one of your resident events um, if you ask um, they usually will commit um, and so like I said we did have that off-site event they hosted that at their location they even offered refreshments and um, mimosas after the event um, and in turn left a lot of our collateral out and continue to give that out to people on my behalf um, as they you know into their facility so it's a win-win um doing off-site events as well and just to go off of that i think um what's really great that we do is we do rsvps so this also helps us gauge the interest in times like if we need to change that around and it also maxes out so if we see there's a lot of interest and we let the business know sometimes they'll be like hey let's do like a second class or let's do a second kind of tasting or margarita drink mixer, just because there's so much interest. So then we'll have two RSVPs and that just helps us gauge in both ways. And I think that's super helpful. Absolutely. You guys should get like custom your cocktails. Like they should have your branded cocktail at the, at the places you go. <laughs> that's always fun outreach too, if it's named after your community, right? I love it. <laughs> Okay, well, we have a couple more questions before. I'm sorry, Melania, we'll get to, we're coming. Um, someone was asking, um, and I, I think this one is based on your management company, so about um, an addendum or a clause in your lease about using people's images on social. So I think that's something you may wanna ask your management company, you know, minimally though, make sure you're asking them when you're photographing, if it's okay to share. Um, I think that's the minimal thing, but I would make sure you ask your management company what the policy is relating to sharing images of your residents on social. I think that is important. So um, yeah, so following that, and then let's see. Um, oh gosh, I, oh, there's so many. Um, okay, so due to COVID, um, you know, is there anything that you guys have adjusted based on COVID? I, I, I know, Jessica, we saw like masks so you probably limited maybe how many could participate at a time and then also requiring masks and things like that. But is there anything else that you guys are doing or has COVID sort of altered what you're doing thus far? Yeah, um, yeah, so um, for us, I, um, 
personally did a lot of online virtual events for residents who a didn't feel comfortable coming in person or just due to COVID restrictions we couldn't you know hold events so doing a lot of online virtual events I did some things such as you know um, online virtual fitness classes online virtual yoga where I would have a live instructor and um, performing yoga classes um, and instructing them online I would also do live um, how to make signature you know margarita um, and you know walk them through those steps they would buy the ingredients and we would all do that online and it was very interactive and I think they enjoyed that so much especially considering the fact that we were so restricted and they they were still able to feel like they were connected to us um, so those are just some of the things I did during during those restrictive periods I agree with that and one thing we did is we did grab and goes so we would just have like Sunshine Energy Drinks, which is a local partner or something that someone could just come down and grab. And it was super easy, pre-packaged. You don't have to worry about gatherings or people being in one spot. And that worked really well. And the residents are super appreciative of that. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna, there's a couple other questions, but I'm going to leave those for a moment. So Melania, we wanna hear from you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tell us no all worries, the I'm here. <laughs> Go ahead. Nope, it's all you. Take it away. Okay. Are we touching still on the three top three creative ideas on outreach marketing? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, we also at Ringwater have this amazing partnership with Craft Happy where they are amazing at bringing in local um, creatives to kind of deliver these virtual um, experiences for our residents. And the, the craft cocktail um, kit is super popular as well as the chunky blankets. And so it really... Um, caters to, you know, that when we were all kind of in, you know, lockdown and creating that resident engagement. So we saw that uh, kind of really pick up. Um, something else that we do is integrative marketing. And so integrative marketing is where we kind of do luncheons with our preferred employers. And so your residents are your biggest advocates and the resident that comes down just to kind of say, hey, you know, and just check on the office is a really great um, ambassador for you. And so we sometimes lean into them and ask them if we could host a luncheon. And sometimes we'll get in front of, uh, you know, 50 to 100 um, people at a luncheon and it eventually will generate a lease within the next few months. And so it's not always about the immediate lease, but kind of just really creating that um, brand awareness within your community and your neighborhood. Um, and then something else that we started doing as far as like integrative marketing is we have this new program that we launch and it's called an artist in residence. And so we leaned into the creative community and had um, for this one particular community in Atlanta, um, it was called Skylark. We moved in three artists um, and we literally just bartered with them for a unit and they um, did these amazing murals that are along the belt line in Atlanta and it really brought in people from other neighborhoods to come and experience our community. And eventually it ended up producing multiple leases. And so um, for us, outreach marketing is anything that brings the outside in. And so, you know, the sky's the limit and we're always encouraging our onsite teams to kind of really lean into their playful nature. Um, play is the, the best form of research um, according to Einstein and we really believe that. So, so yeah, so integrative marketing is, is one of the ways that we really like to kind of um, push outreach marketing. And so um, we've done the goodie bags, you know, we've done, um, I really love some of the social media ideas. I was actually taking down notes. I love the Win It Wednesday. It's like, that's, I think that's a really great idea to kind of really engage with um, your outside um, community. So, so yeah, there are um, artists and residents program has just, you know, since then has grown into now four active communities that are doing this particular program. And so we obviously want to, you know, focus on the units that are maybe hard to lease. Um, it's just a vacancy loss. And if you have um, creative owners that are, you know, would be open to this, this would be a really great way to kind of, you know, fill up that unit and then at the same time create these really unique experiences for your residents and also your neighborhood. And so um, we're really, really excited to see how that kind of grows and, and really helping us integrate with local culture. Oh, I love that. That is fantastic. <laughs> um, those are always fun things. And I, I think when, you know, when we're talking, I, I think it's interesting because part of me is like, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's funny that we're talking about resident events. And so if any of you are thinking about that, a lot of this feels like we're talking about events, right? 
But what we're really talking about is creating those advocates, which is kind of the new outreach, right? The, you know, that kind of outreach is the thing that works the best. And it's really connecting and doing that stuff. But it's also making sure that your residents are engaged in not only your apartment community, but the community in general, because it makes it more sticky, right? They want to stay. And then once you get them to want to stay, they want to share all of that. They want to tell their friends. And so I think it's a different way. It's like inside out outreach, right? It's coming from the inside, but it just as naturally as possible goes out because you're just providing that incredible experience. And I think that's an interesting way to look at outreach today. Okay, so someone had asked, um, and uh, Tiffany, this is for you. I don't know if you want to share, so it's up to you, but someone asked if they could see, if we could share the example of the coaster that you had, and then also, the signed agreement that you use for your loyalty program. Is that something, you don't have to answer now, but we will look into that and we will um, potentially um, add that to the follow-up email. So um, we'll try to attach as many um, items as possible um, from our webinar today. So we will, we will look into that. Okay, and then someone asked, um, oh gosh, I might need to hang on to that one to the end. I'm not sure <laughs> how that one's going. So um, yeah, so I think that to sum it up, I think it's just thinking about outreach in a different way than we're maybe used to. And sometimes that's a little uncomfortable, um, but I think it's trying to find the way on and off site that we can keep our residents engaged with our community. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, because obviously we want lead generation to be kind of the, benefit of outreach, right? But I think that what our panelists have to share is that there's more than just that plain lead management or lead um, leads that we get from outreach. So if we can start, let's have Tiffany start and tell us a little bit about what other benefits you've seen from your outreach efforts. And I know we've covered some of this already. But <laughs> yeah, we have, absolutely. So um, one of the biggest for me for outreach is the ongoing healthy business relationships that you build with all of these vendors that you reach out to. I have had so many vendors, whether they've sponsored my events um, and I allowed them to you know, share their information while they were sponsoring the event, or whether it's just that someone I'm partnered with in general, refer people to us um, so it's ongoing you know that ongoing relationship that also offers the the ongoing referrals so like whether the vendors live here or not they're still recommending our community because we have that relationship built um, so that's something that I've seen um, that I've found to be a benefit as well as resident retention because um, like you said earlier, although we're talking a lot about resident events, but we're also, you know, mentioning how that how we're outreaching while using resident events. This allows um, for you to build resident retention and also it helps build value in the community um, when you go above and beyond in these uh, in these efforts. Um, and offerings to the residents, um, in which in turn, again, it's going to offer us referrals, resident word of mouth, um, which is another form of outreach. Um, and then lastly, um, the benefit for me is just driving brand awareness. So um, it, that's huge, you know. So that's pretty much it. Absolutely. And I, I went out of order, so my panelists are probably freaking out. So <laughs> Melania, if you can tell us kind of the benefits that you've seen, especially with that program you've talked about, um outside yeah. of just leads yeah um the benefits for us were just creating those memorable experiences and so when you lean into these cultural leaders within your neighborhoods um you could throw a marketing event that's open to the public and so at skylark um towards the end of 2020 when we were all starting to kind of open up we hosted this outdoor event and we we really pulled on um, the influence of these three different artists and it really created this amazing event where everyone was just dancing and just having a really great time. We had a graffiti wall where everyone was just kind of participating and ends up creating again like those um, that brand awareness that you want and that partnership. And so along with your standard outreach marketing with the goodie bags and the labeled cookies, you end up kind of really curating these relationships over time. And then when you want to host a, an, um, an event, you lean onto these networks and then you invite them into your property and it really creates this meta effect where you end up creating just a really, really unique experience, whether it's just a block party or a farmer's market. We've done that before. 
where we really um, empower our on-site team members just to kind of do a little like healthy competition where you see how many um, businesses you can hit within a week and then just collect all of those contacts and then invite them for a farmer's market if it applies to them, if they have a particular product or service that they can offer. And then you kind of just bring in a little surprise and delight like llamas. And we didn't think that llamas would be a great hit, but all of a sudden it garnered like over a hundred people to attend our farmer's market one summer. And so, um, you know, you're only as strong as your network. And if you're, you know, out there collecting those business cards, make sure you keep them and, you know, checking in on them and just buy, you know, buying $5 cookies and just, you know, saying, hey, I just want to give you a treat, whatever. And then a few months later, you know, once you're ready to kind of post something, you bring all those relationships in and really, really create that amazing, unique experience through your event. That's a good point. And I think, you know, a lot of us gather those business cards and then we just kind of set them aside and forget. Um, but it's really important to nurture those relationships. So don't let them forget about you, even though you may have just stopped in one time, you know, make sure you're you're building that relationship over time. And, and yeah, I think pulling them in where it's mutually beneficial. I think that's the, the thing you've got to be careful about using those vendors when it's just for your benefit. Make sure that you help them, whether it's tagging or sharing and, you know, promoting them as well at times that aren't when you just need them right so so at other times still promoting them um, when you can because they start to see that and then it starts to become something where they do that for you as well so really good points um jessica okay you're next yeah so i completely agree with that it's about being mutually beneficial to each other and i think after kind of like our mindset changed on site of like oh like we have to go out and do like cold calling or you know bring different things it more started to become a partnership and relationships that we were building in the community. And I think that's more beneficial than anything of just having businesses want to reach out to you and partner with you and ask you what they can do to be a part of your resident base because they've seen the success from other outreach avenues and things that you've done in the past. And I think it's really nice because even another benefit is now I feel like I can't go anywhere without someone being like, oh, like, how's Link IQ doing? Like, I'll go out without my glasses. I'm like, oh, they're not going to recognize me. But it truly is friendships and more than a partnership than just businesses. Like, you really get to know the person you're engaged in their business and you want to do your best to strive to help them. And then in turn, they're going to do that naturally for you. So it doesn't become this outreach where you're constantly just pushing your product. I think when you go about it as relationships and having friendships with everyone, they want to reach out and help you because you've reached out and helped them in turn. In that, yeah, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, just combined with everyone else, I really do think that just kind of, it continues to build value for you, your prospects and your residents and other businesses in the community. Right. And I think we all sort of dread that like cold call, right? Like <laughs> when you said that, like I got like goosebumps. I hate it. I hate the cold call situation, but you're right. It's changing your mindset, right? To think about it in a different way. And I love that. That's a that's so important now, especially with this new way of doing it. And I think as the slide says, I think that doing these kinds of things set you aside. It's like a differentiator now, right? So it's not only a differentiator in marketing and awareness socially, but also for your residents. So once people wanting to move to your apartments, I think it it sets you apart in a, in a lot of different ways. Okay, so a lot of you are like, okay, we already kind of asked a budget question, right? So we're all thinking like, well, how much does this cost? <laughs> and how do we track it, right? So um, I know I switched the, the order on you, but Melania, can you, talk a little bit about your process at Rangewater and how you guys kind of keep track of it and then how your budgets kind of look as it relates to outreach specifically. Yeah, I think budgets depend on the community and the needs of that community and what the owner is really wanting to do with their brand. Um, a, a budget can range from $25 a week to $300 to maybe even a couple thousand dollars, depending on where you are with your budget. So we really like to get creative. Um, we really believe that if a problem is solved with money, then it really wasn't a problem. It was just a lack of creativity. Um, and so uh, we really, really like to kind of get creative on how we can kind of um, deliver on those experiences with little to nothing or just really having an amazing time with a bigger budget. So, I mean, it can start with, like I said, $25 where you do the standard goodie bags, but not looking at it as the cold call, but looking at it as just, you know, you guys are stewards of community. And so how are you being that leader in community? And that's just to say, hey, how are you? How's your day going? 
you know, health business, blah, 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 and just really kind of nurturing those relationships. Um, and then eventually, you know, people love to be asked for help. And so if you say like, hey, we're wanting to kind of do something, you know, an event at our community, would you like to be a part of it? And it just kind of grows from there and ends up kind of really being something bigger than what you could have envisioned, um, envisioned for, for your community. And so really leaning into those collaborations to kind of be budget savvy is really gonna help in the long run because you end up saving your, uh, saving your spend um, but yet yeah, creating strong relationships by just asking for help. So everyone's always wanting to kind of, you know, lend a helping hand. The helper's high is like a real thing. So sometimes you never know, like they're going to feel good out of helping you and covering that, you know, keg budget or, you know, giving you orders from the local restaurant, you know, on them. So really, really leaning into those nurtured relationships is going to really help you be creative on how to, um, execute on, you know, whether it's a low budget or high budget. Yes, good points. Yeah, I think, and and this is the one area where if you build those really strong relationships, you may be able to like lower your, <laughs> lower your budget because they're wanting to help and they see the benefit for themselves too. So kind of an interesting um, look at that. So Jessica, is there anything different that you guys do? Yeah, so what we do is in our CRM, we record where each prospect and traffic source comes from, and we have an outreach marketing part that we utilize. So we're able to see these events that we're going to, how many prospects we're getting, even though that's not the end goal exactly. Um, but another thing we like to do is social media um, engagement and see those analytics and in Instagram. So as you can see on the screen, we shared one of our favorite um, partners. We had their dog treats in the office and they are a local partner. And we shared them, we tagged them, we tagged dog groomers, we tagged our um, local walking company, which is Venture Dog Walking. And so what they did is they shared our post and tagged us and the dog tree company. So you can see our engagement and our reach is going so much further just because we've created those partnerships. And that's very easy to see on Instagram and Facebook. You see those other local partners engaging with you, commenting on your post, sharing your post, um, thanking you. So that is really where our results kind of come from. And then also along with budgets is like you were saying earlier, once you start doing that stuff and everyone's seeing you out in the community, they're gonna wanna partner with you. So we even had a local um, business that's one of our retail partners. They came and did a resident event and it was completely free for us. They did a sample of all their steaks. It was a butcher's block that's connected to our building and they brought all the food and had samples. And it was great because it was seen as a resident event, but it was also gaining exposure and getting our residents to try everything that they have in store. And that was completely free for us. So I think once you kind of start, it may you may have to spend the money at first, but then you'll start to see those benefits come along of people wanting to partner with you and giving you discounts and free things along with that. So I think the progress and results is really from social media and seeing those businesses reach out to you. Yeah, I really like what Jessica said. I, I, I think we um, reminding our on-site teams on the importance of really creating that relationship with your prospect so that they give you the correct um, outreach source or the you know advertising source because you know when we're doing our cost per lead analysis, um, those sources are going to dictate whether or not we want to spend more money in a particular area. So I, I really agree with you know um, what Jessica was saying. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes that can be the hard one. Right. And so <laughs> that's why digging in, even though like, but making it a conversation with the prospect and not seeming like an interrogation, I think that's when you get that like awkward. You don't want to have to keep asking them, but you still want to make sure we understand what influenced their decision to come to our community. So I think Tiffany, did you have anything to add to the this part of the conversation? Yeah, you ladies pretty much covered exactly what it's all about um, in terms of measuring and tracking the lead source. That's one of um, the, the most important parts of this, right? Because we have to be able to measure in order to determine how we need to move forward, whether we need to change our, our what we're doing um, or not. So um, definitely without interrogating, asking those questions up front, making sure we know um, exactly where the person, the prospect found out about us. Um, and Again, it can seem kind of intimidating having to dig deep, especially when we get a vague answer like, oh, I seen I seen you online, you know, well, where at, you know, was it Google, was it Instagram? So um, just digging in a little bit more with each person without seeming as if you're interrogating them is extremely important that way that we have 
um, accurate tracking for that lead source. And then in terms of budgeting, exactly what the ladies said, which is um, definitely those partnerships are going to help. Even if you have a higher budget for um, your event, it's always great to partner and save in any way that you can. And nine times out of 10, those vendors are going to be more than happy to partner and or sp sponsor the event for you. Yes, all good points. And, and like I said, sometimes this is the tricky one and this is the conversation, you know, and maybe it's, you know, allowing it to happen one time so that you can show like your whoever decides your budgets and things like that, that it really does work. And I think that building those relationships and someone said, so thank you for commenting and, and putting in the questions box that someone said, you know, what we kind of heard today is that really doing this kind of outreach is really building an amenity for your community. And I think that's a really cool way of thinking about it. It's like that virtual amenity. Um, that is that extra draw, a reason for someone to wanna to come there because they wanna be a part of that. And I think that's a really cool way to think about outreach marketing today. So thank you for whoever commented that, that was a really cool idea. So I know we're running late and th the problem is the, there's so many good ideas from our panelists today, it's hard to, <laughs> I wanna hear all of them and, and let them share those with you. So um, I think some of the key takeaways though from today, and I, I the last one on here, I'm gonna have Melania um, talk about in a second, but you know, I think as we mentioned, you know, influencers, when you think of that in the traditional sense, you don't have to have someone that has a ton of social media following. You don't have to have a celebrity. I mean, sometimes those are fun to have, right? But it's not something that's required to be an influencer. And I think we need to rethink the definition of that. It's really about how can we make our current residents the celebrities at our community so much so that they want to share? Because those are the people much like them that live there, they will be more likely to know the people that will want to move to your community more so than, you know, the celebrity influencer or something like that. It's a local person, they already live there and they love it and they wanna tell everyone about it. So that's something I think we need to rethink um, the definition for. I think the cute things, you know, I think being a tourist, I think was a really good point. I think that was from Jessica, um, but thinking about it in that way, like experience your neighborhood in a new way with fresh eyes, go through it when you're doing outreach. Don't just like walk down the street and hit every business. Like think about what you would want to do if you live there or if you were a tourist in that area. I think that's a really cool way to think about it. And I love the away games. So hosting those offsite things, I think that's a fun way. <laughs> I think you've coined a term here, Jessica. Um, so doing that away games, you know, so it doesn't always have to be on site. Um, so thinking through that. And then Melania, I know we have just a bit of time, but I thought it was really interesting the way that you kind of use the term marketing floss. So if you can kind of explain that to everyone a little bit. You might be on mute. <laughs> There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, cause, yeah, consistent outreach is good marketing practice for any community. Uh, we call this marketing floss. And so we like comparing marketing to brushing and just dental hygiene. You know, you want to just have that good maintenance so that you're not struggling, you know, where you, you know, get off an owner's call and we're like, oh my God, we need to do all this outreach, blah, blah, blah. And it just becomes like this overwhelming burden. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're your stewards of communities. So why not always be on the forefront of, you know, people's minds when it comes to our, our local brand. And so uh, marketing floss is important. So just go out there and have fun with your neighborhood and um, let people know who you are and what you're about, inviting them to your events every now and then, you know, just creating that synergy in your community through your outreach is just really, really good marketing floss in, in our, from our perspective. So. Uh, yeah, marketing floss is just good um, marketing hygiene. So just you know, keep at it. Sometimes it could seem a little mundane, but you know, make it a little creative. You know, go get into a little costume or something, or um, you know, like what you were mentioning earlier, be a tourist. Um, and then also just reminding your residents that your residents are your heroes, and your brand is just the guide to you know have that lifestyle that they're wanting to to have. So um, your residents are the heroes in your story. I love that. <laughs> and yeah, learn the vibe of your community, learn what they want to be a part of. So I think that's really just getting to know them and building that connection. But yes, marketing floss, I think it's really just, it can get sticky sometimes, but you know, it's going to work in the end. So just making sure that you're always keeping up with all of that dental hygiene or marketing hygiene, if you will. I think that's a really cool way to think about it. Okay, I'm keeping you late, but I want to thank you guys. You have been such an incredible panel and I think all of your ideas have just been amazing. And I think, you know, I took a bunch of notes today. I know our, <laughs> our attendees took a bunch of notes today. So thank you so much for volunteering your time and your 
all of your ideas. I think it's incredible and, and we all thank you deeply. Um, but I wanted to let you all know, so we are wrapping up. We're gonna send all that stuff to you guys um, next month. So March 17th is our next Power Panels webinar. It's on value drivers. So we're announcing the newest value drivers and there may be a couple of questions coming in. So if you have more questions, go ahead and put those in and I'll capture those at the end. But if you are interested in being um, a panelist to talk about what is driving value um, for 2022, we'd love to talk to you. So let me know if you wanna be a panelist. Um, you can nominate an on-site team member and obviously in our exit inter or exit survey, you can suggest any topics that you want to hear on a future Power Panels webinar. Okay, so the Starbucks gift card, let me tell you how to get it. So about an hour after the webinar, we're gonna calculate all of the ratings we get and we'll post um, something that shows the audience rating. And that's the post you wanna look for. So look for that post. And then you'll like either us on Satisfacts for Facebook or Satisfacts Education on Instagram and follow us as well. And then once you like that post, just comment something either that you heard today that really resonated with you or an idea that maybe is different, but this webinar helps spark that idea for you. So put something in the comments um, related to a fun idea that you heard or one that you want to modify for your community. We'd love to hear those. Let's keep those ideas going, right? Let's keep it going uh, for outreach marketing. So. It'll be about an hour after the webinar and the contest will close at 5 p.m. So we will announce the winner tomorrow. So we're super excited um, to see all of those ideas coming through on Instagram. As I mentioned, the next webinar is March 17th um, and don't forget to take that exit survey. Um, but thank you again, my panelists. Thank you again. If you wanna say goodbye to everyone, I am so appreciative of your time today. Hi, thank you. And I got a lot of great ideas from all the other panelists. So I'm super excited to try those out now. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next month.